This is the last section of chapter 6, uh, continuation of creation and the retracement of your 165. 165. Pay um, general instru instructions for deputies. These were the listed some of uh, some of the general instructions uh, for your deputies. You will provide a good compass of a particular construction, written house construction, having a nubious division, nubious division, and movable sites. And a two-pole chain of 50 links. The chain must be adjustable by standard chain in uh, by the standard chain in the office of the Survey General. And it will be the it will be of importance that both it and the compass be frequently examined in the field in order to determine any errors and irregularities which arise when using them. Um, and the compass must have that particular. Uh, Ma uh, name on it by indicating its manufacturer. Uh, next instruction stated in the book on page 165. All township or sectional lines which may, which you may survey are to be marked in a manner here to practice in the surveys of the general of the United States land by as is following. All those trees which you your line cuts must have two notches. So those line trees are going to have two notches, indicated that trees on line, made on each side of the tree where the line cuts, but no spot or blaze. So two notches on either side of the tree is to be made, but no spot is or blaze is to be made on them. And all or most of the trees on each side of the line and near it must be marked with two spots or blades diagonally or quartering towards the line. Now the instructions to the deputies. Now this one here, it all, it, it all, uh, there would be line trees and they would indicate notches on or either side of the tree. As regarding other trees that are nearby where they are uh, or close to it, near to it, must also be marked with two spots or blades. Uh, I'm not too sure. It all depends in terms if we do find evidence of that in the original notes. I have not seen any of those, those nearby trees being blazed. So I stand corrected. Um, number five. Uh, are the instructions given uh, to for deputies? The post must be erected at a distance of every mile. So a post is erected every mile and half mile from where the tongue or the section line commence, except a tree may be used situated as to supply, so as to supply the space of the post. Um, if a tree is on the line that represents the the um, corner post must be right at every distance on at the corner then the tree will be referenced accordingly which which post must be at least three inches so the dimensions of the post is three inches in diameter and rise not less than three feet uh, page 166 and under that same um, instruction last uh, section on that paragraph page 166 the letter t over it on the post letter t with the number of the township is that would would be um uh written or scribe onto the post t for township and above that this letter r for the number of the range but for quarter section corners you can put no, uh, put no numbers on the tree they are to be designated by this mark like for example quarter s quarter section all right and they give you further descriptions of what it is in terms of the notching or how you should describe it uh, the sixth instruction you will be careful to note in your field book all the courses and distances you shall have run the names and the estimated diameters of all of the corner bearing trees and those trees which fall in your line called uh, station or line tree, more commonly called line tree rather than station. 
not as Afo, Afo, uh, in the aforementioned uh, springs and small streams of water with their width and the course they run in crossing the line of survey of the survey and whether navigable rapid or mountainous all of that need to be noted in the no, in the notes seven another instruction in all measurements the level the horizontal the, the level or horizontal length is to be taken uh, um, is to be taken not uh, that which arises from measurement over the surface so you don't want any um, slope distance horizontal distance and when it happens it to be uneven and hilly you need to do, they would have followed uh, step chain and type of method eight though the line to be measured by a chain of two perches you are notwithstanding to keep your reckoning in in chains of four perches for on a hundred link each and all entries in your field books and all your plans and calculation must be made according to the decimal measure of a chain nine ninth instruction your courses and your courses and distances the direction angles must be placed in the margin of your field book on the left for which purpose it should be large and your remarks made on the right so uh, the field book tells you exactly what it should entail so you have probably the change to, um, as shown in your in your in your book page 166 you have how many chains is not not changed there's 20 chain at this 30 links uh, you're moving between sections 35 36 township 4 range 6 and a chain 20 30 links so 20 chains and 30 links there is a white in um, your page 167 it continues with uh, what a typical field book would look like so um, please review it it's it's simple to follow and this is transcribed but they actually during those times they were act they were using it's handwritten and um, the the handwriting it was quite different from the you know it can be a bit challenging at times when you look at some of you know in order to read what they're they're writing it's very uh, if the handwriting is not clear, it's, it's, it's a challenge to interpret it. But anyway, page 167, uh, an example of the distances that they would traverse and also on the, on the right hand side, on the, you see what they would have seen, for example, what um, bearing trees, the width of it, the diameter of it, uh, what stream they came upon to, etc. Instruction 10 from your textbook, page 167. The part of each township and fractional part of a township must be neatly and accurately protracted on durable people. So protracted, not set out there in the field. By a scale of 2 inches to a mile or 40 chains to an inch on an inch and must be in such measure and proportions in every line and, and part as actually as determined by the measurement in the field triple corners came in to be in by some of the earlier constructions wherein the surveyor set a new corner whenever he did not fall in with uh, the existing corner so there were instances they're trying to accommodate for um, inaccuracies um, when the original survey did not come upon to the point where they, they should have come up on especially those when it doesn't line up with the township corners and there are other instructions given but um, these are all that was summarized in your textbook the next paragraph on page 167 bottom it is not known whether any of the deputies uh, any of the deputy service ever follow these instructions 
But historically, they were they are important to know and understand since they set the basic foundation of knowledge and expectancy that the then government wanted, that was supposed to be provided by the Jep deputy surveyors. Please go over on page 168 some of the descriptions, uh, so the, the, the notion of double corners, figure 6.10, double corners along a township line in accordance to the Tiffin's instructions, and figure 6.11, your triple corners in cases where um, it does not, section does not uh, close where it's supposed to. Um, all right, section 6.14, page 169, second sentence. Each township that was surveyed, section 6.14, state instructions and statutes. So apart from the instructions, they are also, apart from the federal instructions by, by the BLM or the, um, the general land office is also state instructions and statutes. Each township that was surveyed was separate and unique. At the beginning of the surveys, there were no standardization struck standardized struck instructions. If any were needed, in all probability, handwritten instructions were given to surveyors, generated to surveyors in all, on an individual basis. So handwritten instructions became a norm during that. An example, Act of March 3rd, 1811 in Louisiana. Congress provided for, um, these are some of the state instructions and statutes. In Louisiana, Act of March 3rd, 1811, Congress provided for the survey of lands claimed by persons in the territories of New, of New Orleans, um, Orleans and Louisiana and provided for the subdivision of the public domain as follows and they give you the what they act covered section 2 and before they enacted and give you the details section 4 and section 6 uh, you know the stipulations regarding how those lands is going to be subdivided and the Act of March 3rd, 1811 in Louisiana, there is section 8 um, that the Surveyor General shall cause, shall cause such of a public lands, shall cause that such of a public lands in the territory of Louisiana, Louisiana as the President of the United States shall direct to be surveyed and divided in the same manner under the same regulations and limitations as to ex as to the expenses as to the provided by the law in relation to the lands and the United States. So a lot of these and this act gives you the, um, the, 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 some additional instructions that the state required. Section 12, that all navigable waters, rivers in the territory of New Orleans and Louisiana shall be forever remain public highways, meaning it's public access water courses. Um, third to last paragraph from the bottom. The lands of Louisiana, according to the Act, were not surveyed exactly in accordance with the procedure used in the Northwest ter Territory. Double and triple corners were avoided. So in Louisiana, they avoided the double and triple corners. And the northern and the western section of the township differed as well. In Florida, Um, second last paragraph from the bottom in Florida uh, errors of a closure uh, in, in Florida a letter from Butler to his surveyors contained a note that each surveyor should add a link of one inch to each half chain so he is and his instructions indicated that there was a link added on to the half chain. There is no explanation for this recommendation. All right. Um, except that he felt that it would compensate for the sag of the chain. So adding a link obviously is going to add more link to the chain. 
with the intent now if he's gonna he's saying that there's a sag that is not correct for the sag in some instances but adding the length is gonna give you a length to that chain is gonna add um, uh, compensate for that I don't see how but anyway page 171 uh, figure 6.12 it shows you uh, early Louisiana the surveys errors due to convergence and the measurements were divided up equally in the last half mile all right so as they come closer to the end the last half mile it was actually um, uh, divided up equally okay <coughs> Now, another set of state instructions and statutes is the Louisiana Instructions and Statutes, page 171. Statutes pertaining to Louisiana. Have begun court have been quoted here. Each survey general had the authority to put statutes into effect by issuing rules and regulations to his deputies in the Louisiana instruction. Page 172. In general, top paragraph in a general circular dated. So additional information was circulated. In Louisiana instructions uh, September 23rd 1831 signed by Elijah here would have found the following special notes pertaining, pertaining to Louisiana and they have shown you those special notes page 172 173 page 174 half-mile posts in Alabama and Florida this is where most of the half mile posts were set. In the early years of surveys, of, uh, of the surveys, it was recognized that the survey system had to be employed in as economical a manner as possible. It is interesting to note that the modern day surveyors who conduct true treatment in these two states, Alabama and Florida, have known and recognized half mile posts as being present, but it's not until recent years that they recognize the legal significance of these survey points. Surveyors participated practicing in these two states find it an absolute necessity to refer to the original notes to determine how the original surveyors treated these points in running the original lines. Next paragraph in many of the early Florida and Alabama surveys. It was recognized that the survey system had to be employed in a, uh, in many of them early in Florida and Alabama surveys. The, the custom was to set half mile posts at record measurements. So put a half mile, put a post every um, 40 chains on, on all lines, including random lines. So random lines were run initially uh, as a temporary, random lines were run from east to west where they put in temporary posts and the true line was they, they were supposed to come back and correct for those um, temporary posts uh, along the true line. In most instances, the half mile posts were monumented and only a reference by a, a distance was made to the quarter corner. The description of the patents uh, were to be allocated parts of the section and an unmonumented quarter corner the usual practice was to accept the monument points as the true allocate corners and not the unmonumented quarter corner. In 1815, in 1815, uh, the, in Alabama, the validity of these half mile posts was legally tested in a decision in a common case, Walters versus Commons. Please note that common case. We'll go over that later on. Um, page 175 before we go on page 176 please refer to the um, the field notes that was transcribed where they indicated uh, on, on top for example second third line 
set half mile pose 40 chain set half mile pose and then further down again 40 chain set half mile pose if you go down that list you can actually see where half mile pose was set Uh, page 176 continues again with um, where the field notes uh, was set where it says half mile pose that can be implied as being not set where it says on page 175 set half mile pose that's where it can be implied that the pose was actually placed out there so different interpretation Anyway, anyway, back to page 176. Anyway, last paragraph. Any retracing survey must consider the half mile pose in these two states can be treated in either two ways. The half mile pose is treated as a quarter corner, or the half mile pose is used as a point for line determination and placement of the quarter corner by proportioning or by a direct measurement from the half mile pose. So, treated in either way. However, whatever it is the survey does, has to you know back it up by the by by whatever method he used by the reasoning of that the survey adopting that method make it known the um the, the reasoning of how it was why it was done and how it was done page 177 paragraph the the validity of the half my post was questioned very early in Alabama as to what weight a retreat and survey should apply to your half my post over the unmount unmonumented your quarter corner ideally a half my post should be the same as your quarter corner but because of um, they're not certain, uh, you know, doing the random line and not come back with the true line. There are instances where the quarter corner does not match up to the half mile post. The Supreme Court of Alabama held at the Land Act of February 1805 controls in the half mile post has no legal significance. So they have ruled the Supreme Court that. Um, the Supreme Court in 18, uh, the land of that had no legal significance. In fact, they even recommended that the survey remove them and resort so to go out there. So at that time, to go ahead and remove those half mile posts and then rely on the quarter corner as being the equidistant point between the two section corners. Section 6.15, instruments used. The instruments used in the, in the public land surveys were identified by federal statutes as well. Initially, the only reference was to the compass of the, and the compass of the written house construction, possibly because declination could be set off. All right, but as to the distance, it was the land act of 1785 which stated that all lines be measured by e by the chain and they specified the length of the chain no uh, later on the length of the chain no mention was made of what length the chain should be at that time most of us in the meat and bound state were using a chain of two pole chain which is 33 feet in 1796 same paragraph on the instruments used. In 1796, the chain was identified by law as being a chain of two poles, which is 50 lengths. It did state that all the measurements would be kept in measurements of four poles. So from two poles, measurements it should be kept in four poles. Even though the law is still valid today, surveys now use electronic distance measurement, GPS, if they're doing retracement using this equipment, it has to be converted back to these chain units. <clears throat> Next paragraph. The law stated that all lines will be run with a compass of written house construction. Then a few years later, Congress repealed that portion of the act only to add it again when it realized an error in its action. The magnetic compass 
next paragraph cause problems with keeping the lines true as in because it's affected by um, the gravitational force uh, on the earth's surface uh, especially when you get in mountainous areas uh, as it's reading and the bearings in the least division is probably half a degree as well another consideration in 1839 William Austin Burt a US deputy survey in Michigan invented the solar compass and that relied on the sun for the determination of the true bearings. The solar compass will not be affected by the um, magnetic field, those uh, magnetic compass. A significant improvement, next paragraph, uh, middle of that paragraph, a significant improvement over the regular magnetic compass. The solar compass permitted surveys to run lines and accuracy of minutes which is better, of the true bearing as long as the sun was shining. Next paragraph, until, 18, until 1902, the public land surveys were made with the magnet compass. After that date, surveys were made with instruments provided with the accessories necessary to determine the true meridian without reference to the magnet needle. So prior to 18, 1902, they were using the magnet compass. Before the discontinuate, um, before the discontinuance of the compass, surveys were extended into the into the iron ore belt in Michigan. And those compass, the magnetic compass, were, was affected by it, by this iron ore. Many local areas are known to deflect the angles, the needle as much as ten to twenty degrees in those Michigan areas. And it distorted the section and the surveys. On page 178, it shows you an example of what a solar compass looks like. If you're lucky, you might find um, these vintage equipment available uh, on eBay. A colleague of mine, faculty, passed on. He bought one of these on eBay and he paid, he told me he got a deal. He got it for $800. Now, this is, these are very, very expensive vintage equipment. All right, um, section 6.16, 6, field notes in terms of what the, the GLO require surveyors to do. By law, page 179, land is patented from an approved GLO plat. However, the plot is a, is a product of the field notes that were kept by the surveyor. Middle of the paragraph, one will also find other information regarding topography, terrain, and happenings that the surveyor felt would be helpful on an informational uh, basis. A surveyor should read any and all the notes available before any subsequent surveys or retracements are conducted or undertaken. So as much um, field notes you can get in order to retrace those footsteps the better off you'll be for those retracement surveys decisions last sentence that the paragraph have held that field notes along with any other document as much as part of the original survey as was the running of the lines on the ground to complete the retracement the retracement survey must refer to and consider these original field notes as well as any other supporting evidence the nomenclature for sections uh, figure 6.14 shows you the nomenclature of the sections and uh, if you turn to page 180 you see an example of what the sections look like and how they would um, go over these sections or read in your descriptions Let's go back on page 179. The nomenclature, reading your descriptions of this type is simplified by following the description backwards. You want to read from this end backwards. So the, the east half of the southwest quarter of the southeast quarter. So you want to do the southeast quarter first then the southwest quarter then the east half 
will identify the quadrant or the, the subdivision that you're looking at all right would be visualized as the southeast quarter first the southeast then the southwest quarter of the southwest quarter of the southeast then the southwest quarter of the south east quarter next and then lastly the east half the east half of the last visualized parcel it will give you which section they're referring to or oh, oh, output parts the smallest legal size will recognize by uh, recognized by the federal statute for homestead purposes was one quarter of a one quarter however smaller parcels are commonly designated to identify portions of the homestead holdings as well meandering in the GLO surveys um, from the earliest time, meander lines will run to determine the location and the area of rivers and lakes because they are not um, straight lines but more mere um, bend curvy lines. Uh, the GLO had um, special procedures in, uh, and then in, in using those meandering lines. Charges were, were changes were made for dry land acreage only meander lines will run to determine the area to be to be charged in the winter time when surveys were, were run across the ice entire lakes were omitted at, and at times gross errors were made in in most instances meander lines do not control boundaries but they do control area determination, FYI. Resurveys and retracements. Land owned by government and one subdivided, may be subdivided by the government at any time in accordance with the manner prescribed by law. In the event of a re-subdivision of the township, two plots exist, one showing the original survey and the second showing the re-survey or retracement. That's a given. Where an entry patented a parcel of land by the original township plot, no re-survey or retracement is supposed to be executed so as to impair the bona fide rights or claims of the entry man. Meaning that if you do a resurvey and, it, and that resurvey has certain implications that are going to cause confusion or um, litigation in terms of people who already have access to that land and has bona fide rights to it, um, then, what the, uh, the, then the, the surveyor should stop, look and listen decide do due diligence and capture all of the evidence and let the uh, section 6.2 defective boundaries and counted and resurveys um, on resurveying the boundaries of old boundaries to initiate new surveys, defective conditions of the older survey are not incorporated in new surveys. When a new township is to be surveyed, at that time it was found that the southern line is defective in the measurement only. New corners are set at the half mile interval will apply to, to the section to the north and the old corners with the regular measurements will apply to the section to the south. And as a result, you have double sets of corners that will occur. Double set of corners similarly may occur on the easterly side, northerly side, westerly side. When the easterly or the southerly boundary of a township is defective in its alignment, um, what they would have done was new sectional guide meridians were established as a corrective line run as shown in your figure 6.15. You have a sectionalized correction lines on the east. Uh, you should see the defective boundary. 6.21 sectionalized surveys and innovations. 
middle of that paragraph more recently global position is, global position and systems is being used to help position new surveys and retracement in alaska thousands of square miles were surveyed using helicopter methods protracting and various um, um, untried methods are being adopted all right so there is also um you know retracement of these areas using the new methods, new um, the sectionalized surveys and the innovation that we use nowadays. 6.23 townships other than regular. In the course of researching and conducting surveys, a survey in a GLO state may encounter townships and resulting sections that are at variance, that are different from the typical eight chain sides and cardinal direction. The various laws reflect the anticipated the anticipation that the full six mile square townships and the sections contained within them will be other than as prescribed by law fractional township smaller sections of townships um, and sections were anticipated when township was surveyed and its lines would not make the six miles and as such there would be sections within a township that would not be 80 chain side cardinal um, direction so those require some addition those are townships that are not are, are not the regular size townships page 182 uh, next paragraph under the law to have a fractional township not a full size township it must border lines that those would occur that terminate at the meandering body Okay, so a township that has that's near to a meandering body like a water body or near to a state line or, that, or an object that's impassable, Indian reservations, those will be, all be referred to as a fractional bong, a fractional township. In middle of that paragraph, in many instances, the surveyors at the time, at, at the time that the lines were created were left to their own devices as to how the line should run. Page 183, bottom paragraph. In fractional sections and townships, there are specific rules as to how the line should be run when there are no opposite corners. Before surveyor, a surveyor attempt to retrace a fractional section or township, he or she, be, she should become familiar with the specific methodology described in the BLM. And that's the first place to start. What would the BLM or the um, a GLO, the General Land Office, instructed the surveyors to, to, to follow for, for fractional township. As well as the booklet referred to that, uh, that is online, you can download it, is the restoration of loss or obliterated corners. Very useful in terms of information how they address the, the surveying of the USPLS. <coughs> Section 6.24, Summary of the GLO System. Principle 4, in the public land states to practice in the modern techn technical world, the surveyor must have an intimate knowledge of the historic legislation that created the PLSs, because those are the boundaries that were established in, in the original surveys, and, uh, and, and based upon those boundaries, we have developed uh, and, and did our surveys uh, uh, that are hinged to these these boundaries so you need to understand the historic significance of these existing boundaries um, whether they are there on paper they do have evidence of the thread of evidence that's going to prove them next paragraph the surveyor must understand that the basic requisite of the system is that no land would be patented to any person until it had been surveyed and a plot prepared and approved no land whatsoever even the first time when the land was subdivided page 185 the system and the laws the paragraph relative relative to this system provided for the sanctity of the work performed by the original survey crews in the field to the point where the law was enacted whereas the original measurement is without error recognizing that we cannot go out there and say well they did they, they made uh, lots of errors let's redo the thing the entire system no it's not accepted it's not legal that they do that 
middle of the paragraph all of this was accomplished with a few instructions as possible and as much latitude as could be provided so a few instructions initially um monuments were set were set and uh, you know they were initially because of lack of surveyors uh, the purchasers buying the property were um uh, were given the authority in some, in some instances and uh, there are evidence of it to go out there and do their very best in cutting out the track of land that they just bought. Some of the principles uh, that should be understood by surveyors as follows. One, the created surveyor created boundaries of the public land. Two, the original surveys by law are without error. Three, the accessories the bearing tree, for example, the line tree, to the original corner set by the original surveyor at the time of the original survey, when recovered and proven, have equal dignity and, 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 and evidence in terms of the weighting of those evidence itself. And four, the federal government can resurvey any of its land that have not been patented as long as its bona fide right is not affected. Some very important um, um, principles that surveyors should understand. Principle five, there can be only one original survey and no other. Any other survey for the original survey is called a retracement and cannot alter the original corners or rights or, or section lines. This concept this concept next paragraph is difficult to understand until one realizes that land before it was surveyed has no legal or physical boundaries. Principle six, unless created by state regulations, the BLM manual is not mandatory for private surveyors, but can be used as a guideline for those private surveyors if they wanted to link on or uh, connect or tie into those existing Next paragraph, the servant um, community eagerly awaited for the 2009 edition of the BLM Manual, and that is already available. It's online. You can download it. Please key it, use it as material for your FS exam, fundamental serving exam, and also for your professional practice exam. Private surveyors use this manual in their principal course of guidelines for working with the GLO areas in the country. They do not realize that this manual without legislation or direct acceptance from their respective states does not apply to private survey. It is assigned as an in-house guidelines for BLM surveyors. However, the, uh, the, the private service can use it as well. The bulk of this manual is directed towards the creation of the GLO boundaries with a chapter of how you would retrace these boundaries. Very useful. Principle 7, the addition of the BLM that applies to retracement is the manual that is current at the time of retracement was performed. So, in order to do a retracement, you need to know the date that original survey was done and also link that date to the manual of the surveyors and then would have been given the instructions to follow. Page 186. La, top paragraph, last sentence. After extensive trial, the judges ruled that since the original plots were approved in 1845 before any manual, this is an example, the current manual was inappropriate. So using a current manual on a case that was uh, that the original plot was based on a, a manual that was before the current manual, obviously um, the judge would rule based upon the original manual. All right, this concludes this lengthy chapter on creation and retracement of your GLO boundaries. Go over the lectures, take note, read it, read it carefully, understand it, and we will continue with the next chapter seven next class.